All of these things and it's there's just such a divinely orchestrated poetry behind it all again think of the story of redemption that the Lord is telling it's he's painting this weaving this beautiful tapestry right so this is believed to be the location after they come up through the desert so here we are this is Jordan that's east you go south down through Jordan through the through the kingdoms of Moab and Edom. Now you're going down into southern Jordan, modern day Saudi Arabia, Sinai. They've come up through the desert. They get here, Moses is now gone. And Joshua again splits the, jo the river, the Jordan splits. They cross right here, which is why they call it Kasser, Yehud, Yehudi? <laughs> Ali Yehud. Kasser Ali Yehud. So where the Jews crossed. And it's also where Jesus gets baptized by John. Okay, now again, the, the story is that that was a prelude, it was a foreshadow, it was a faint dress rehearsal for when the king himself will march through the desert on the ground in anthropomorphic form, marching from the south, setting his people free as they enter the land, fully redeemed, fully his. And so you have all sorts of beautiful poetic passages that speak of this. Isaiah 35 and 40 in particular. I'm going to read, and it's kind of a lot to read, but I'm just going to read it. The desert and the dry land will become glad. So that which is parched, dry, so that's, think of us, think of the land, will become glad. The desert that's formerly dry will rejoice and blossom like a wildflower. It will blossom abundantly, and it will also rejoice with joy and singing. So in the same way that the desert is transformed, it's this rain that pours down, the desert blossoms and flowers and our souls itself anxious, tired, exhausted, depressed, weary, are rejoicing with singing. Those who are formerly prisoners, literally, who have fled into the wilderness, some of them having fled, some literally, it says, as prisoners, 
are set free by the divine warrior, by the king, and they're singing. One minute they're in prison, the next minute they're singing. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see with eyeballs the glory of the Lord. Think like the shining of the sun, the, the dawning of the sun, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the weak hands. This is for all of us even right now whose hands are weak, we're tired. Strengthen the weak hands, steady the shaking knees. Say to those who are cowardly, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God, vengeance is coming. Justice is coming. If there's not a day of justice, this entire world makes no sense whatsoever. There's just so much injustice, just perpetual. There's a day of justice. The one who has ordained, who has made all of this, has ordained it, has planned it. The eyes of the blind will be open. The ears of the deaf unstopped. The lame will leap like a deer. That type of language repeatedly used. The tongue, the mute tongue, will sing and shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the desert, in the wilderness. Streams in the desert. The parched ground will become like a pool. The thirsty land will become springs. That which was formerly just a desolate haunt of jackals will become grass, reeds, and papyrus. A road will be there. So there's a highway up through the desert. It will be called the highway of holiness, the holy way. The unclean will not travel on it. But it will be for the one who walks that path. Fools will not wander it. There will be no lion devouring vicious beast will be there. But the redeemed will walk on it. The redeemed and the ransomed of the Lord, those who have been set free, will return. They're taken. They return to the land. And they will come to Zion with singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Joy and gladness. I love this. Will overtake us. Sorrow and sighing will flee away. The, the sorrow and the sighing of this age will flee and we will be overtaken with joy and gladness. So that's Isaiah 35. It's just too beautiful not to read. And then Isaiah 40. Very, very similar. Comfort, comfort my people. So speaking to Israel, says your God, speak tenderly to Jerusalem, announce to her. So again, in the context of the day of the Lord, after the king has returned, her time of of, it's, this says hard service is over. Her iniquity has been forgiven. She has received from the Lord's hands double. Like Jacob's trouble, like she will have received far more than double for all of her, her sins. Prepare, so here's a voice of one crying out in the wilderness. So in a sense, this is Isaiah, but we'll come to it later, John the Baptist. Prepare the way of the Lord through the desert. Make a highway for our God in the desert. Every valley will be lifted up. Every mountain and hill will be leveled. Uh, you know, it's, it's roll out the red carpet, make a road. And it's that which is self-exalted will be humbled. That which is humbled will be lifted up. The uneven ground will become smooth. The rough places a plain. The glory of the Lord will appear in the flesh. The glory of the Lord will appear. All of humanity will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Okay. It goes on very similar theme so now let me jump to Luke 3 in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar while Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea Herod was the tetrarch of Galilee his brother Philip kind of very specific on time God's word um, actually God's word came to Zechariah the uh, came to John the son of Zechariah in the desert he went into the vicinity of the Jordan so he's out he's all the way out here this is quite a walk yeah. or even a ride Proclaiming the baptism of repentance, proclaiming the mikvah, the ritual cleansing of repentance. Okay, so he's he's preaching everyone, come and wash away your sins, repent. Salvation it it, it, it cannot come apart from repentance, right? For the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord, make his path straight, every valley will be filled, every mountain and hill made low, the crooked paths become straight, the rough way smooth, and everyone will see the salvation of the Lord. So it's quoting um, the, the, the um, Septuagint, it's slightly different, but it's the glory of the Lord here, it's the salvation of our God. He says to the crowds that came up to be baptized, you brood of vipers who warned you. So, 
Jesus obviously comes and is baptized to fulfill all of these things. The point is this, John the Baptist is spiritually preparing the people for the first coming of Jesus. It says in Hebrews, he came once for atonement. He's coming back to judge the living and the dead. No one can stand on the day of judgment apart from through atonement, apart from being covered in the blood, right? So John was preparing the heart spiritually, but there's actually an ultimate fulfillment of being prepared that he will march up through this way in a very literal sense. So this, it, just this very location, and again, I fully believe that even as Moses did in the, in the Exodus, you have all these passages in the context of the return of the Lord that he will split the Red Sea yet again. And I believe that literally if this is the spot or somewhere very close to here, he'll actually come through this very way yet again. And and, and so the, the baptism, the washing away of the sins, yeah, I mean, it's, it's ultimately one time, but this repentance is a lifetime process and, and so forth. We can do it as many times as we want, but we're preparing our heart for the King, ultimately for the coming of the King, for the day when he will be here, when we will see the glory of the Lord with our eyeballs. It's like not to spiritually perceive him, we will see him and all flesh will rejoice and gladness and joy will overtake us. So it's just, again, I just, I love the picture, the poetry, the location, all of it is uh, tremendous. So let's get wet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what? We, we hadn't been here five years because we could never be here last two because of the time. And now this is this is the, it's been a while. I'm glad we could make it. Well, they, it's because it closes. baptize you in the name of the Father and His Son, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yay! 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 Somebody down to you. <laughs> oh, where she showed up. <laughs> okay, so the reason we came down here is just because it's so shallow up here. Very muddy once you get there, you're going to be about a foot of mud. But then there's some solid nice. on, the, on the bottom. <laughs> right, we'll go backwards. You want to pray? Lord, with those words, with that cry for repentance and, and cleanliness and purity, I baptize my sister Kim in the name of the Father and His Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit.
Ricky, don't you lose my number. <laughs> no, I'm asking God not to Amen. Father, we thank you that you hear our prayers, that you always say yes to uh, request to cleanse our heart, make us clean. And with that, uh, with that confession, with that prayer, I baptize my sister Ricky, in the name of the Father, and the Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Wash that face off there, Ricky. You got the mud right all over your face. Wash your face in your eyes. Get it? Yeah, yeah. I can't get it. There you go. There you go. Get a towel here. All right. Yay! It's a little chilly at first, but once you get in, it feels really good. <laughs> no price. Well, yeah, you're just numb. <laughs> <laughs> right Sorry. You, <laughs> you might want to just step on the steps and wash your feet. Well, I guess, is there sh are there showers? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes. I don't know what to say. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Yes. Father, we thank you that you didn't abandon us, you didn't leave us alone, you didn't just throw us into this world and forget about us, that you provided for us, you knit us together, you created us, and you provided a path forward, you provided a way, you provided atonement even for the Gentiles, even for those that were in darkness. Father, we thank you that you do hear prayers. Thank you for my sister Rebecca. Based upon her request, her prayers, I baptize her right now in the name of the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit.
Road Mark, in the name of the Father, I baptize you in the name of the Father and His Son, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay, so the reason we came down here is because it's so shallow up here. It's very muddy, which you think it'll be about a foot of mud. But then there's some solid in the middle of the bottom. <laughs> Lord, with those words that cry for repentance and, and cleanliness and purity, I baptize my sister Kim in the name of the Father, and the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Don't go yeah. down oh, there, yeah. accidentally. Step on the steps and wash your feet. Well, I guess is there other sh showers? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> us 
and you provided a path forward, you provided a way, mm -hmm. you provided atonement even for the Gentiles, even for those that were in darkness. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you. We do hear prayers. Thank you for my sister Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Based upon her request for prayers, I baptize her right now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Will they come up? We'll soon find out. Oh, there he is. It feels invigorating. How does Elf say it? Congratulations, everybody. <laughs>